Hi, today I'm going to uh, discuss initially the data path A to build two dice and an adder for our special project. Uh, we know with RTL design, we have our data paths as well as our controller. And so we're going to design our uh, data paths. Taking a look at the dice game, we see that we actually have two data paths that we're going to design. There's data path A as well as data path B. <clears throat> we know that for our RTL design, that basically our data path is the, uh, are the devices out of our library that basically handle those data operations. And so focusing on data path A, we see that it's basically made up of two counters. And those counters we're going to use uh, to design uh, two dice. And each die is going to count from one to six. And we can't just use S clear to initialize it the way that we've initialized our counters before, uh, because that would be zero. And we need to have our initial output be equal to one. So we have to actually load uh, each counter with the value one. And then also, we can't just let it count all the way up. Um, we have to stop it at six and then reload the new value of one all over again. So basically, it will just constantly count from one to six, one to six, one to six. And so um, we have to do that, taking a look at the counters. We've looked at this several times before. We know that a counter is made up of D flip flops along with muxes and incrementers. We know that if load is equal to one, we're going to load new data and our, we can set a constant of one, uh, decimal one, into our uh, DN. And so therefore, if load's equal to one, we will load new data. Alternatively, if load's equal to zero, then either Q will be equal to uh, the previous value of Q, or if roll is equal to one, then we'll have count enable equal to one, which will then have Q next be equal to Q plus one flowing through. We're also going to use the synchronous clear. We know that if synchronous clear is equal to one, we're going to have um, the input into this AND gate equal to zero at the active edge of the clock. Q next will be equal to zero. <clears throat> We've talked about the um, precedences for um, counters. I won't spend any extra time on that. You're going to go ahead and start a new project using model sim. Oh, I'm sorry, using Quartus 2. And so create your project called um, Dice Game. <clears throat> and then uh, you're going to have a BDF called um, Data Path A, D Path A. <clears throat> and so uh, we're going to have our top level at this point be uh, Dice Game. And we can see here with Dice Game, we have their symbol for D Path A. And we have our switches, switches 0, 1, and 2, handling roll S clear and S load. And then we have our 50 megahertz clock uh, handling the clocking. For our outputs, we have <coughs> count A. Counter A output is going to be shown on uh, LEDs 5 through 3. Counter B output is going to be shown on LEDs 2 through 0. And then the sum of the two, the output of the adder, is going to be shown on LEDs 9 through um, 6. <clears throat> OK, and so you're going to create this project called Dice Game. And you're going to have a BDF called Dice Game. That will be your, your final top level. And then you're going to uh, create another BDF called DPath A. Going back and discussing uh, DPath A a little bit more, we want to talk about uh, using the counters. You're going to need two counters. You're going to choose the LPM counters out of your library. And uh, notice that it does have a lot of inputs that we have to handle. The first thing that we want to handle is we want to set the parameter equal to the correct width. Because we're only counting 1 through 6, we know that we can use the ceiling function of log to the base 2 of 6 to figure out how many bits we need. And so we end up with 3. We're going to set the parameter for our width equal to 3. And I'm going to leave all of the other parameter values um, blank. I'm not going to do anything with those. But I'm going to go ahead and set up these other inputs. Taking a look at those other inputs, we have um, up and down. We just want to set that equal to BCC because we just want to count up. We're going to have um, D in equal to the constant value of 1. We can just set the... Uh, the value for that is ground comma ground comma VCC. We did uh, something similar to this with our last um, stopwatch 
<coughs> value, <coughs> our stopwatch uh, project. Okay, S load, that's going to be our load line. We're going to set that equal to um, load uh, for each counter. Okay, our clock is our 50 megahertz clock. Our clock enable, we're just going to set that to VCC. We're just always wanting to enable the clock. And then we're going to use count enable to determine whether we actually count or not. And so count enable will actually be our roll line. Okay, from, um, from our next input, CN, we need to handle, um, we want to set CN just equal to VCC. Okay, that's always just going to be equal to 1 because if we do increment, uh, we just want to add 1 to it. And so uh, VCC um, for CN, okay? Um, S clear, we're just going to have an, um, a port called S clear for each counter, okay? The other inputs, S set, asynchronous clear, asynchronous load, and asynchronous set, uh, we're just going to set equal to ground. We're not using any of those. <clears throat> okay, taking a look at our data path A details, <clears throat> We know that coming out of the controller, we have our role, and so that's going to be our count enable for counter A as well as counter B, okay? Notice that we have to add some additional logic for counter B, okay? And so that's going to be equal to 1 when count A is equal to 6 and role is equal to 1, okay? We're going to do that because we don't always want to have the same values. Um, if we just have the same counter, the same clock, for both, we'll always have 1, 1, or 2, 2, or 3, 3, and so forth. And so we don't want to do that because um, we don't we want to have alternative values. And so we're going to change count enable or roll B for counter B. And counter B is only going to increment when counter A is has reached 6 and roll is high, like we stated here. <clears throat> okay. And so uh, we're going to add this additional logic. Notice that if we have the uh, an AND gate of load A as well as roll, then uh, we will um, we can go ahead and set enable count enable for B um, high. Okay. All right. Taking a look at when to load uh, count the counters for counter A. Okay, we want to load it at the very beginning. So it, we're going to set S load as one of our inputs, and we also want to load uh, when the counter A is equal to 6. And so we're going to check that by having the outputs going into an AND. We have uh, count 2, count 1, and not count 0, right, to give us um, 1, 1, 0, or 6. And so those are the two times that we want to load 1 back into uh, our counter A. And so we can do that. The propagation delay time of these of this combinational logic is much smaller than the 20 nanoseconds uh, that we have for our, the period of our clock. We're fine, no problems there. We don't have to worry about that. We can handle that, okay? For counter B, <clears throat> uh, we also want to set this one equal to 1 when we're loading new data, as well as uh, when B has reached 6. Notice here that uh, the counter for B, because count enable for B is six times slower, we're going to add one more input into our AND gate. We're going to add the roll B. This will allow um, <clears throat> count the counter for A to get all the way through to six um, before we reinitialize B back to one. <clears throat> okay, so we have a uh, four input AND. Okay, <clears throat> going back to our data path A uh, details. So if we handle the two counters, we have count A output, we have count B output, and those are going into the adder. Taking a look at the adder, this is just the same adder that we used uh, several times before. We have our LPM adder subtractor. Again, set the parameters. Our width here is three because count A and count B are both three bits wide. We're gonna just basically set um, our direction to always add, and we don't need to add in any extra timing, so our pipelining will just be set to zero. Set asynchronous clear to ground, set carry in equal to ground. We've handled the add subtract up here in the parameters, so we can just leave that one open. For our outputs, we have our result being the addition of sum, okay, so we've added count A plus count B, but then we also know that if these values are both six, um, we have 6 plus 6, which gives us 12. 
It requires four bits to represent 12. We want to save that carry out, and so we have this uh, sum three. Our final value is uh, a four bit sum three through zero. <clears throat> okay, and so once you've done that uh, in your data path um, within Quartus, <clears throat> you've created your BDF here, you have all of that done, and then you can create a symbol and you can uh, go ahead and um, <clears throat> put the inputs in. Go ahead and then run your, um, call this dice game, right? And add your files for your um, tests, your data path A um, tests. And actually, I'm sorry, set data path A uh, here as the top level when you are setting up to run model sim. You'll have your, <clears throat> um, your test benches as data path A test. You're going to choose data path A test.vt as your test file. And you're going to choose data path a underscore test dot do as your script. Okay. Make sure you check on your run gate level simulation after compilation um, in order to to uh, run models. And after you've done that, turn all of those off, those settings off, um, and then set dice game dot VDF as your top level. And uh, once you've turned off model sim, then you can go ahead, run it again, and um, program your board. And this will give you an output for data path A. Uh, you can get that checked off for 25 points. Okay, thanks. Bye.